we understand then what sihr is and that's the jinn doing its tricks. The question therefore is, why would the jinn do it? Why would he do it? We understand what's going on. But the question is, why would he do it? And this is where I'm going to destroy one of the most incorrect myths about black magic that is absolutely dead wrong. And we need to get this out of our minds completely. The, the myth is that the magician controls the jinn. This is a myth. This is a lie. This is completely wrong. The myth is that the magician is powerful and the magician has somehow trapped the jinn, has somehow made the jinn his servant. And so the magician portrays himself. And of course, why is this myth popular? Because that's what the magicians say. That's what the magicians want to point out, that we are the ones in control. In reality, nothing could be further from the truth. Rather, listen to this, the magician is a servant of the jinn. And the magician is a worshiper and humbling himself in front of the jinn. The jinn is lord and master of the magician. The other way around. Now, of course, the magician doesn't want to tell you that. And that's why he portrays himself as the master. But the fact of the matter is the opposite is true. And therefore, whatever the jinn does, it does because it wants to do it. Not because the master has, or sorry, the magician has forced him. Here's a key point we believe. No one could control the jinn other than Suleiman. To claim that a sahir controls the jinn, you are saying the sahir has the same power that Suleiman did. And that's what Allah is saying. وَمَا كَفَرَ Sulaiman. Suleiman's control of the jinn was not through magic. Allah gave him that power. And the shayateen said, Suleiman controls us through magic as well, to smear him, to smear him. And Allah says, وَمَا كَفَرَ Sulaiman. Suleiman did not control the jinn through magic. So anybody who says that the magician controls the jinn is accusing or saying that the magician has the same power as Sulaiman and that's dead wrong. So why then would the jinn do something for the magician? Here is where we get to the key point of magic that sihr is a bartering, a transaction between the magician and the jinn. Sihr is a business transaction, literally. It's like you go to a shop, you give money and you purchase something, right? It's a business deal. And the magician gives something to the jinn and the jinn gives something back to the magician. And the both of them need each other, but the more powerful of the two is the jinn and not the magician. Just like we need each other in business transactions, right? I need to go to your restaurant, your car shop, your this. You need my money, I need your services. This is the reality. We need each other. And in most of our transactions, there's an equal amount of element. We all need each other. That's how society functions. But in sihr, there is not an equal. In sihr, the more powerful is the jinn. And the less powerful by far is the magician. So. The magician gives something to the jinn. Now obviously, what does the jinn want? The jinn does not want your American Express number. I'll take it, but not the magician. You can give it to me, no problem. As long as the expiration date is there too, no problem, I'll take it, right? But the jinn doesn't need your American Express, doesn't need your cash, doesn't need your credit. What does the jinn need? Doesn't even need your food. What does it need? The jinn, what was the fundamental problem of Iblis when Adam was created? He felt he was overlooked. I am better than you. Ana khayrun minhu. So the jinn feel inferior. We can quite literally say, sihr comes from an inferiority complex of the jinn. Quite literally we can say this. The jinn feel inferior. Because they know we are better. Now hold on a sec. How could we be better when all of these things have been given to the jinn and not to us? Because Allah gave us the most powerful thing He didn't give to the jinn and that is aql. Knowledge and intelligence. We are more knowledgeable 
and more intelligent than the jinn. And knowledge is power. And that's why even in our society, what do we value more? The intellect or the strong man? Who gets paid the most? The CEO or the wrestler? Well, these days, okay. Even, even if you want to say the wrestler for a while, how long is he going to get paid? For what? The boxer, how long is he going to get paid, right? In reality, okay, let's, let me put it this way. Who gets paid more? Uh, the office worker or the manual labor? Let me put it that way, right? Even though who does more physical work? Obviously. I mean, you can hire somebody at minimum wage to do the most grueling labor in the sun, to build and to carry and to what not, and you pay him what? What is minimum wage these days? Eight dollars an hour, seven dollars an hour, right? Seven twenty-five is it in Tennessee? Huh? Seven eighty-five, right? When I started, it was four ten or something. Subhanallah. You guys are lucky, man. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, oh, when he started, it's a dollar sixty. So, <laughs> that's true, actually. Alhamdulillah. I was lucky when I started. So the point being that you will find somebody to do that manual labor. And what do you pay a lawyer? <laughs> Three hundred fifty. What do you pay the doctors? I don't want to insult you guys. What do you pay with doctors, man? You know what I'm saying? Like Subhanallah, right? So. And you guys are sitting in your office looking at... Anyway, let me not go too far. The point being that... <laughs> who gets paid more? It's the intellect. It's the people of intellect, not power. Right? So in the end of the day, Allah gave us what He didn't give the jinn. We are smarter than the jinn. And we have knowledge and the jinn don't have that knowledge. And we have prophets amongst us and the books are revealed to us and so on and so forth. So the jinn always feel inferior. So what do they want from man? They want to feel superior. They want to feel we're the boss. So what do they do? They, they trade. Just like the manual labor will give you his sweat because hey, I don't have the power he has. I don't have the power. I'm not going to build bricks and whatnot. You have that power. You have the time. I'll pay you. I have money. So what does the jinn have? The physical power. He has the speed. He has the, the, the hiddenness. He can transfer knowledge. He can do this and that. He's giving you his manual labor. What are you going to pay him back? Your devotion, your dedication, your worship, your subservience. You will literally, literally prostrate yourself and bend over backwards and do whatever the jinn wants and humiliate yourself to please the jinn. And that's why, and of course, that's one reason the jinn do it. And of course, another reason is that. So number one, it makes them feel. And number two, misguidance. Because the jinns know when you're going to worship them other than Allah, well then, takes you out of Islam. Khalas, they won. Right? Because one of the goals of the jinn is what? Misguidance, they want to misguide you. So, the jinn tells the magician, you want my services, this is my price. And what does he ask him to do? I don't want to tell you too much detail, and alhamdulillah, I haven't studied it in too much now, nor should I, but you know the horror movies that all of us see and whatnot. The fact of the matter is, is elements of truth that humanity has learned and they put it into these horror movies. There is some things that they know and we know this from our culture. So what does the magician do? Sacrilegious things, right? Things that are just disgusting, evil, blood sacrifice, right? Or, you know, even in children's books, so what is the magic recipe made of? What is something that you put in the magic potion, right? Toads, the grass says toads, huh? bones, okay? The eye of a what, gnat and the, 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 the leg of a this and that. Now, ima and you know, we laugh at this, there's an element of truth here. Meaning what? Imagine if you have a list as ridiculous as this. Get the bone of a dog, get the eye of a this, get that. And you have to go around for days getting these things. How do you think the jinn is going to feel watching you in humiliation? This is giving the jinn what? A boost, a thrill, right? And then he will say, go to the graveyard in the middle of the night and do this and do that. So the magician will go along and do it all. So in reality, who's more in charge? The jinn is more in charge, not the magician. Because the magician, I mean, in reality, the magician needs the jinn more than the jinn needs the magician. So the magician will literally sell himself to 
the jinn. And when you sell yourself to the jinn, you cannot be a worshiper of Allah. You cannot be a worshiper of Allah. And that is why it is very common for the, for the magician to actually do acts of blatant kufr. Things that are absolutely disgusting. Things that involve, and I don't want to even mention it inside the masjid, but it involves dishonoring some of the signs of Allah. It involves najis, it involves humiliating his own body. It involves yani, sacrilegious, vulgar, profane. And I don't want to give examples, but wallahi, the worst of the worst things that even, even a, a, a person who's bad will not do what the magician does, right? You will have thieves, you will have murders, you will have, they have a, a limit of what they, how they maintain themselves. Magicians have no depths of depravity that they're not going to go down to. Doing stuff that even an agnostic atheist would feel disgusted at doing. And I do not want to give any examples, but anything you can think of, wallahi, they do worse than that. I swear by Allah, they do worse than that. And I speak from my own experiences with doing exorcisms and whatnot, that they do much worse than this. And though anything you can think of, they do worse than this. And why do they do it? Because again, from the perspective of the jinn, it's getting a thrill looking at you, humiliating yourself, putting najis on yourself, eating this, doing that, going there. Look at the thrill that you're giving the jinn, right? And so in return, if the jinn just has to go and slap somebody and come back, more than happy to do it so that you have to grovel even more, right? Correct? Right? And this is the reality of what sihr is. That the magician is basically giving this jinn some boost and misguiding himself by becoming uh, away from Islam or worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Literally, I mean, with the, they say that you sell yourself to the devil. That's literally what you do. Literally, it's not, even a, uh, it's not even a figure of speech here. That's what you do is you sell yourself to the shaitan. Do what you want. Or ask me to do what you want and I will then, you know, obey you. Now, therefore, what therefore happens here is that what happens is that, uh, and, and okay, so why would, the, why would the magician do this before I move on to the next one? Why would the magician want to do that? What is the motivation of the magician? Money. Money. And maybe even fame, but money. The main motivation of the magician is money. And what did the uh, Fir'aun's magician say? قَالُوا أَإِنَّ لَنَا لَأَجْرًا What's in it for us? Right? So, Magicians, what do they gain? Money. From whom? From people that come to them. It's a profession. It's a job. And a job that gives them power as well. That's another thing. It makes them feel powerful above other men, but not above the jinn, because they are the servant of the jinn. Right? They have to humiliate themselves in front of the jinn, but in front of the other people, it makes them feel. It's like, imagine how a massive bodybuilder would feel, though nobody can beat me up, right? Walking around like that. That type of boost, I got the jinn that's gonna help me. This is arrogance, correct? That arrogance will be given to the magician, no doubt about it. Because he feels he has a weapon that you cannot oppose. But what does Allah say? They can never harm somebody except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, to then summarize very briefly, so then what exactly is uh, how does this happen? That the man who wants to do this evil deed, the man or woman who wants to do this evil deed to become a magician, so they learn and study this art from somebody who's already trained. And this person will tell him, you need to do this and this and this. And again, this is filtered down through our horror movies as well. There's this element of truth. Sit at 3 a.m. facing such a direction in the middle of a pentagon and you draw it out and you will have this color light and you will have this and that. So these are signals being given to the jinn world that I'm willing to enter. So these are, this is re, in reality, this is exactly how it happens, right? That these are signals that are being given to the jinn world that this is what the Babylon jinns were taught. That how do you communicate with us? How do you get in touch with us? And from that has been developed as we said into Madai. But the point is, so the magician does this. And he will sit there and sit there and subhanAllah, I've interviewed a number of these people uh, before and after their toba, sometimes before, sometimes after. And yes, this is exactly the, the, the reality that they will say that we did this and you know, every day nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. So the jinn is seeing if you're serious or not until finally one day they see something or 
a power or a presence or a voice or whatever. And then they are told, do this. So raise it up a notch. Are you serious? Then do this. So then there's direct communication. They will go and do it. And then the relationship begins. The relationship begins. And then this jinn that they contact, typically, uh, and I say this from my own experience, I haven't, uh, I don't know of anything in the Quran and Sunnah that would support this, but nothing negates it as well. From my own experience is what I have found, that the jinn that communicates with the sahir is not typically the jinn that goes and irritates or does the, the, the harm. Rather, that jinn does indeed have minions. Servants, because here's the point: the myth is that this, the the magician controls the jinn. I've asked people with what chains, whips? How? What are you going to use to control the jinn? How? You can't even see it. How can you control it? But cannot the stronger jinn control the weaker jinn? In their own world, yes, because that's their world, and quite literally, quite literally, the jinns are like some type of mafia with the boss, with the godfather. At the figurehead, right? And the the magician contacts one of the upper guys, one of the henchmen, one of the bigger, maybe even the boss himself. And then his work is subcontracted out. <laughs> Literally. Tells one of the lower guys on the on the ladder, you have to go do that. Right? Minimum wage. Outsourcing it, right? Outsourcing it. But no, not to India. No, no, don't worry. No. <laughs> 